Hello, everybody. Welcome to our final talk of the session, not of the day. There's another dev room in here this afternoon. Um, this is Edward Lewis of ICANN, who is Hello. having hardware troubles like all of us all the time. <laughs> and eyesight problems. The, the microphone fell off the clip. And when I look at something that small, it disappears because my age of eyesight is advancing. And I left my reading glasses in my, my uh, other jacket. Edward will be talking about the different ways of minimizing any. Yes. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. So um, this, uh, I guess this is kind of sort of a pet peeve of mine. Um, and I talked to the authors about it, uh, of the document, and they encouraged me to bring this and bring it up. Um, but I'm going to try to make this pet peeve interesting to software developers. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, so uh, the, the title here, in the subtitle, I have the name of a document. It's an RFC from the IETF, came out a little while ago, uh, talking about how to minimize uh, responding, responding to any. Um, and I'll talk about why, why we have this document, a little bit about that, um, an observation I've made, a measurement based on uh, dealing with this, uh, then trying to find out why I see the results I saw, and then see is this a good thing or a bad thing for the trend of software development, and of course, I have to mention Brett, uh, Bert, who bears a uh, camel at the end of this, because everything's about the camel. Uh, so the document, uh, why does it exist? The Q-type, Q-type any is a feature of the original DNS. It's been around since the start. Um, and it's had, it has basically three uses. One's benign. That is, you can use it to get a lot of information about a name if you go to the authoritative server and ask it, and you can get everything that's there. You're kind of like snooping on what the authoritative server is saying about that name, regardless of type. It has everything comes back. Uh, it has a problematic use uh, because some people realize they could do that and use it to ask recursive servers the same question. Not really, the recursive servers don't get all of the records, so they may not have all of the stuff. And any and all became kind of confused. And that was the first road down to this being a problem. Number then finally. It became kind of a, 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 what is it, a malicious use of this, because if you wanted to generate a large volume of traffic for, for say, a, a traffic flooding DDoS, you could ask for all the records, any of the records, at some name and get huge mass of stuff, especially with DNSSEC, uh, the larger use of names now, and f flood uh, victims with lots of traffic. Uh, those are the three uh, probably most obvious ways of seeing this uh, query go from being something that was useful to something that we really want to kind of get rid of. Uh, so, uh, and, and for a while I was very much in getting, I wanted to get rid of this too at one time when I was working in a job that this was in fact uh, impacting us. Um, but when this was written, I was not part of the, uh, the effort. It had moved on to other folks and I moved out of that job. Uh, so, but in doing this and saying that the, this, any, we had to get kind of stop using any queries, uh, what do you do instead? How do you say, no, I don't do that anymore in the DS? It doesn't really happen. Uh, but there, there were a few ways to look at this. One was to say, we don't do that, but we don't have that way of doing this. Um, in the DNS, it's kind of funny because in the DNS, you say no to someone's query uh, in, a, in a sense of an error. That may make them try again or even more frequently. In fact, we see if we stop answering queries for, for reasons, we see traffic come up instead of go down. It, it goes backwards because people are trying harder to get the information. Uh, also, uh, yeah, we also realize we want to help those that were doing things the old way, backwards compatibility, those that were using the problematic version of this. We want to make them not be pained by this. Um, and so the protocol developers tried to come up with some way to say, no, we're not doing it anymore. That would appease all of the interests that were involved here. Uh, and to go, to go, before I go further, the way that says no is that there are three, in the document, there are three different things that could happen. Instead of sending back everything you have about the name, uh, when you're asked for, for any, any is not all, but any is the query, uh, you can send back a subset. Just pick something and just send, send it back, minimize it, coming back. Uh, the second thing is to come back with a synthesized H info, which in the previous talk, uh, Leo mentioned that that was revived by uh, Cloudflare's effort, to, who happened to be the, the people participating in this document. Um, they brought that back to life saying, we'll use the H info record to say, this is a minimized any query out there. And the third one was, try to guess what the query wanted. And if you've ever written DNS code, you realize that DNS doesn't give you much information beyond, here's what I'm asking. I don't tell you why. So it's really hard to guess 
when you're writing code. I don't know, code that can guess is really kind of hard. Uh, sometimes it might, you might have an idea, but um, not always. Now, the, this, I'm not picking on this document because the document actually mentions the points I want to make and these are verbatim uh, clips from the document. Uh, the first one says this mechanism does not signal that an incomplete subset has been sh coming back. It doesn't tell you that it's minimized it. Number two, it receives the HINFO response, but it's not possible to tell us HINFO was synthesized for this purpose. Uh, so then again, it's not really that reliable. And in the last one, it says it's, not, it's possible to guess what the initiator wants, but not always. So, I could tell here that the authors were not trying to just cut things off, but they really had, there's no place to go with this that, that's, that's this great. Uh, so to clarify my complaint here is I'm not uh, out to stop limiting the query uh, any. Um, I think it, it's really uh, kind of not, a use, not necessary to the protocol. Um, the problem is that I don't like the way this kind of is becoming non-deterministic. You ask a question, you get back an answer, which might be a mystery or might be the response. You can't tell one or the other. Uh, and this has happened before. Um, this is a, s a small issue, probably, but I see it the same way. We we re we, we overuse serve fail to mean errors of DNSSEC versus other service failures. And uh, there was the the use of the TXT record for everything out there. And if you remember the SPF record uh, having to do with mail uh, uh, mail protection, you know that didn't go well. So. Uh, so my little experiment, I, I run something where I do, the any, I do the any query all the time. I use it to look at the TLD operator, the tops of the TLD zones. And so I know I have an idea what's going to come back. So when I ran this, I, I run 13,475 queries for this experimental. I don't normally do this, but I asked every name server for every TLD an any query. What did I get back? Um, I got about 250 to 260 no's, uh, UDP, TCP. I tried both of them. Um, and, but the thing that got me was I got like nine or ten different ways they said no in that small sample. That really bugged me. It was a small sample, nine or ten different ways. Um, and the, the absolute numbers here are kind of overcounts because operators do do a whole lot of work together. Um, if one operator changed their decision, they might switch 250 responses right away. Uh, but to give you a graphical view of this, and I don't really have a good, I, I got the small crayon set at work, so I don't have a lot of colors. Um, so I did this chart this way. Uh, the first chart shows, uh, I, I asked this many times, I got that many responses. Of course, it's pretty good. These are TLDs out there. Um, of, in UDP, I get a lot of truncation, which is okay. It's, it's understandable. You truncate large responses in UDP. But of the, the ones that got through there that were problematic, I got a spread. Don't worry about what they are over there. There's a spread, a lot of colors in that, in that circle over there. Um, and that covers everything, including, uh, if you look through there, there's the H info down towards the bottom. That's the special case for the H info record. All the other ones were, that was the one type that was seen there, except for the empty one, of course. That means nothing came back. Um, and I got 10 different ways in UDP. For TCP, uh, same thing, except I don't have any truncation in TCP. Um, and I get back another little color wheel with lots of different variation out there. Um, again, the fact that the NS1 is the biggest part, of that only means that somebody does it a lot that way. It doesn't necessarily mean there's a lot more use of NS. So I started drilling into the numbers because at first it looked, this was, that was what I thought was interesting to see. But then I said, well, let me figure out why I got this. Why am I getting these numbers? I found that some of the IP addresses out there I ask for different IP, for different TLDs respond differently. So somehow it's being a, cho it's a choice based on either per query or per, per zone or per something going out there. So I decided to figure out, now, can I find some more patterns here? Well, it turns out that TLD operators out there sometimes don't really hide, they don't want to hide their version. So they actually, version.bind actually works for some of them. And I'm looking at version.bind. Now, you, that's mostly a, not a great way to get data, but I got something out of it. And so I looked at the, and, I, and there was like half a dozen implementations that popped up that I could identify. Um, three of them appear on this chart. It means three of them were minimizing. There, were no, there was no evidence from the other three that um, they were minimizing. Now mind you, I have the big four up here. So three of the big four, and, the, and that's bind, NSD, un, uh, uh, NS, uh, say bind, NSD, not, and a parity and So the big four open, open source uh, implementations I, I call. Three of them are minimizing some way. And you can see what the, how it comes out here, where there's uh, empty answers from some of them, or not from implementation one and three. They all do NS only. And then there's other types that are spread out there, which I, I couldn't really explain. So, I actually did want to explain this. 
So I looked at the configuration information, documentation, and from what I could tell, um, in NSD, there's a refuse any option, and it, it says what it does here. And on UDP, it would truncate, and for TCP, uh, it works like normal. Uh, default is no. Uh, bind 914.6 says that over UDP, it'll pick only one of the RR sets um, to go out there. It doesn't say anything about TCP in there, so I couldn't tell what was going to happen. I didn't experiment myself. Default is no. And I looked up not in DNS, and I could not find documentation saying how to do it. Um, but I found email in, but through doing the searches, web searches, saying that this was just not done. Uh, so looking at these four, big four, and how they let you configure this, didn't answer the question of, well, how did I have it answered differently per TLD? Um, in fact, it, this doesn't even match up. I have three out of four doing this, even though two say how, and how they, um, and the choices just don't line up with this. It's still kind of interesting to me uh, to figure out how this is going on. Uh, so I'm a bit baffled by this. Um, I couldn't see evidence that the operators were able to make choices that looked like it was intentional in, the, in doing this. Um, I didn't see that some operator always answered a certain way. In fact, I was baffled by one particular name server which answered the same way for all but one of the zones it was serving up. I don't know. Um, so I don't know, it, it, somewhere in the software, somewhere in the operations, it's, it's not quite lined up yet. Um, why does this bother me? I mean, I, I really don't care much about the any query. I'll, I'll get into that. But in the principles, principles of protocol design, I like determinism. I want to know, query goes out, I should get back a predictable result, or a very definitive signal when it comes back. Two, um, I have this long-term running uh, relationship with, with operators and realizing that we staff the desks with people who have less background over time, just because of growth. And, um, so I want the protocol to be simpler. Uh, one time I heard this from somebody, I wish I could have a better support for this statement, but a protocol design should be like a state machine. You have state machines on both ends of the channel, and as you trans go, for, you can transition from state to state based on each message going back and forth or each signal going back and forth, timeouts or whatever. Should be very deterministic. If I'm on this side and I, want, and I think the other side is thinking this and I'm telling them something, I want them to go here in the conversation. Um, I don't want them to actually kind of, like, maybe they're over here now. I don't know. Like, it makes it very hard to communicate in a protocol when you have this, uh, like, random number generator, essentially, popping up there. Now, granted, DNS is not really good at this, but it's, it's a dream. I'd like to have the protocol be very specific so that both sides know where each other, what you're thinking going back and forth. Uh, now, the, how does this apply to my observations here? I'm talk, I, want, I guess I didn't bring this slide up earlier. I probably should have. I was asking from this end about information over here. But I know over here, I, these are APEX, they should have an SOA record, they should have an NS record. If they have DNS sec, they should have a certain set of records depending on what kind of DNS sec they have. Um, so I have an expectation on this side of where I should come back. And I'm, and I'm not seeing that come back and I can tell it's an error. Think about this in a more generic case where I don't know what this name is. Is it an APEX, is it not an APEX, I don't know. If I get back one, one record set, I might think that is all it has, if it's, if it, it's better. So it's a little, this, is, this is some uncertainty in my, in, my, uh, in my mind here about the way this, this uh, RFC is recommended coming back with the don't, don't, I don't do the full thing. Um, now, should I be able to detect or minimize? Any response is a good, fair question, because um, I go back and forth. I don't think that this is a critically a critical change to the protocol. But it bothers me that we have this non-deterministic uh, element going on. And I'm going to go uh, past this point right now. Uh, another thing is staff expertise uh, out there. Uh, I've seen it where I've wanted my operator to have much simpler tools to use. I want the, pro the software they use to be simpler. They don't need to understand the protocol. We can't afford to teach them the protocol anymore. Um, we keep bringing more people in, take people turning over. They want to know how to make things work. Are things, are things working out there? Uh, this puts pressure on the tool makers to make sure the tooling is there, it's in, it's, uh, in place, and it's simple. Uh, so are the gaps here. Protocol engineers describe so the way software can be written. They like functionality, like to make things um, do more things. Um, but I find that sometimes they tend to lose sight of what's in operations and what, are, what the tool makers have to do. Uh, excuse me, the operators? Um, oper I, I, if operators are interesting because they they have a job to do that doesn't matter what they're doing. They have to do a job. They have to make sure things don't fall apart. Uh, I've, I, worked, I met with a group of people who are new operators, came in to run an organization. They know how to do operate. They can operate anything, a bus line, a ticket agency. Now they're running a DNS thing. Um, 
but they're mystified because the protocol really hasn't been, it wasn't running the way they thought it would go. Uh, what this does, a lot of operators will lead on package software to do this, defaults and all that. Um, now, the software developers, and you know, I'm assuming a lot of people in this room are more uh, interested in the software development process, caught in the middle of this. And the, the Bert, uh, Brett, Bert, Brett, I'm sorry, Huber's camel talk, if you haven't seen that, this is a link to his saying that what straw is going to break the camel's back when I keep getting demands for more and more uh, features on my DNS software. Uh, this is what I'm, I'm really concerned that this is doing. This is making this camel uh, getting closer to the edge. Uh, so uh, it's a classic DevOps issue, maximize functionality versus minimize downtime. Um, so what do you do about this? Um, this, is kind of, this is what I'm, my message here is. Um, I want to encourage folks in this room to uh, get involved with the, with the IETF process. Um, I was told that, where were you when this document was being written? I said, well, I was actually there, and I kind of got tired of it. Um, but people have to go in there and say, is this implementable? Is backwards compatibility always desirable? Do we have to get rid of some old features and say, you know, it also has got to break because we, we don't, it doesn't matter, shouldn't be there. Uh, can it be implemented? That's what needs to, people need to have an eye on that when they go to these organizations that, that run the protocol development. Now, that's my basic uh, message here for folks. Um, you know, if, if, you're, if you're not doing this, what I fear is we're going to have to have more DNS flag days. At some point, we get rid of features or features conflicting with each other. We need to have more input to the process to, to make sure that we don't say in this document, we're going to let any be minimized. The response coming back is going to be this. You want to have it be like one record. You want to have one thing come back saying, if you see this, stop asking for any more information. Assume you're not going to get any and fall back to whatever you need to get your information. And that's uh, my basic message for, for the, uh, this talk here. So I have an email. My email is in, in the slides if you, have, if you want to ask me about this. You can ask me now, I guess, too. Um, so... I'm done. Thanks. Thank you. Any Thanks. questions for Edwards? Shane. Hey, this is Shane. It's not really a question. It's more of a comment. Sure. I mean, <laughs> we, we all know that you can't really trust any queries for anything. So it's already kind of performance art, right? It's like you go to a play and the, the, yeah. the writer's trying to say something and the yeah. actors are trying to say something and the directors are trying to say something and you have to interpret what you get back. And it's, it can be enjoyable, but don't treat it as, as science and well, you're all right. Yeah, I, so I, this, was, this was part of the conversation I had with, with the, the people who wrote the document. For, for, uh, for what I've been doing, my, I, I, have a, I, I have a use for it. It's not about my use for it. My use for it actually it, that works perfect because um, I'm asking a specific question of a specific small population. Um, I, I don't deserve to do that. In fact, my code is for years how it had fallback to ask for everything you expect to see there anyway. It's just more efficient. Um, and yeah, but I mean, this is, I, I don't think the any query, it's not that I'm a, I want the any query to survive. Don't get me wrong. I don't want it to survive. I want it to be clearer that you're not doing it. That's what I'm after. That was, in, when this document was being discussed, um, I first was uh, irritated. The H info option was the first one out there, and I thought, well, you know, I, we don't like to reuse. Uh, what create a new record type? Oh, it'll take 20 years for that to roll out, right? Um, this is what I'm after. We want to make sure that we do changes to the protocol so that it's sustainable, so that we, you know, maybe we, you know, because well, and I, I understand the discussion that went on too. Well, what about in a case where someone was relying on it, and we shouldn't take it away from them unnecessarily? So maybe we'll do some. Get, is that worth? I mean, is it is it worth? Is that something we can keep doing? Because that's part of the, the straws in the camel, you know. That so that, that's the thing. If I think if people here felt strongly enough that change, don't don't fight this one. If a change is coming along in the IETF and it's going to change the code in a way that makes the code bloat up big, go to the IETF and let them know this is not implementable. And that's what I'm asking. So here, here, yeah. Right. Another question. Yeah. <laughs> So I presume in your uh, analysis you used, uh, you used non-recursive queries. What about the recursive ones? And what is the role of a DNS cache server in that respect? Because uh, when yeah. I, I was trying to implement or implement the last version of the DJB DNS curve, I also was, uh, had to take the decision what to do with the any ones. Yeah? So that's, uh, I didn't yeah. solve it yet. Yeah, I mean, you know, 
It, well, it, it, that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, I, I, in, my, in my work, I always go to the authoritative servers. That, that's because I'm grafting off a code that does that. I didn't do recursive. But it's a good question. What should a recursive server come back with? Um, you know, and I, I, if I told you now, I'd be thinking on top of my feet. But obviously, you know, there are a couple, the, the problem is, I, like, my first reaction was not imp, not an implemented R code. But if that happens, some folks go into a tizzy about that and keep asking other servers now to see if they do it. Not imp is for non-implemented opcodes. Right. They say. Right, right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so we, we, maybe that's part of the problem. We don't have, we, the protocol doesn't have enough definitive, like, this, this is a, there's, there's zone level errors and there's server level errors, right? The server's not going to respond to you, go somewhere else. But when the zone is out, we need to tell them, stop asking. Um, I've seen meltdowns so many ways. I mean, it's not uncommon to a lot of people out there. But for recursive service out there, I mean, I, I just haven't thought. I've, I've never worked in the recursive service field, so I haven't thought of it, to be honest. Yeah. That, that should actually, that would actually be part of what is in here. Because I think the people who wrote this were thinking as authoritative service, too, come to think of it. Because I, I don't see recursive in there at all. And I do know uh, who they were. You know, they, they work with Cloudflare, uh, obviously. Um, and they were trying to solve some problems also beyond the ones I was just putting out there, I suspect. But I'll just leave it at that. So. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Cool. Sure. You want this now. Go steal that. <laughs> yeah. This concludes the DNS dev room. In about 30 minutes, the web performance dev room will start here. Um, I will stick around for a bit. Bet some others will. So if you have any questions, talk to us. Thank you for visiting us.